Hi, this is Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts, getting ready to read to you someone else's testimony. It's publicized by a young woman named Bernada Fernandez. Listen to this. This is the testimony of my first journey. As I was not feeling well that morning, my husband refused to leave me on my own and go to work. I told him that I was not alone. After he left, I felt that I was dying. So I decided to phone some of my friends and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law answered, Bernada, God bless you today. Do not be afraid. The same answer came from another brother in Christ that I phoned. But he added, Bernada, get up from your bed and praise the Lord. Cry to him and glorify him. So in spite of my lack of strength, I cried to the Lord saying, Lord, you are my strength. Come and help me. I tried to stand up, but my strength left me. My voice could no longer be heard, but in my soul, I was crying to the Lord to help me since I was dying. Suddenly, my room was lit up of a light which looked like a fire. Immediately, my fear vanished, and I saw angels descending and walking in my room. I could hear them clearly speaking to each other. And suddenly, a marvelous being appeared, more marvelous than angels. He was dressed in white with a golden sash. On his chest was written in gold, faithful and true. His face was showing gentleness and love. Jesus, the Christ, was in front of me, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Blessed be his name. Jesus approached me, touched my head, and told me, I am Jesus who died for you. Look at these marks in my hands. They are still there for you. I came down from my throne of glory to speak to you. There are many things in your life to put right. You are lazy and quick-tempered. Moreover, I do not want 25% Christian, nor 95%, but 100%. If you want to go to heaven, you have to be holy as I myself am holy. I came to take you on a journey. I asked him, Lord, is it a missionary journey? He answered, no. When he took me by my hands and lifted me up and talked to me with simplicity and love, he brought me as far as my window. He looked at the city of New York, and I saw sadness in his face. He wept and said, my word is well preached, but people do not listen. The sin of the city has reached my father. The city was full of homosexual, homosexuals. Among them were politicians. The Lord told me, it is another Sodom, but I am alive and the judgments of my father will soon fall on this city. Then I knelt before the Lord while crying, and he told me, do not be afraid. When judgment falls on this world, my church will no longer be on earth. He then led me again towards my bed and asked me to phone a brother from my congregation he gave me the name of the then brother. He then asked me to tell him that my spirit would come out of my body and that they should not bring my corpse to the hospital or to any funeral ceremony. Instead, they should tell my husband to trust the one who is the resurrection and the life. The Lord told me again, I who give life, I take your spirit, but you will come back and tell the peoples to trust me fully. 
The one who believes in me will never die. He stretched his hand, and I saw that another body came out of me. I was dressed in white, and I was shining like the Lord. He told me, <laughs> look, this is the body that Christians who obey my word will soon have. I realized that I could go through the walls. The Lord who was holding me by my hand said, look, when I turned, I saw my body without spirit. He explained to me that my physical body was worthless. It was nothing but dust, and that at death it will become dust again, as any physical body would become. He added that the new body I had was a glorious one, which is the spirit he gave to man. He added that the new body I had was a glorious one, which is the case. We ascended through a funnel, a tunnel, below the earth, and when approaching a certain place, I could perceive an unbearable smell. I said, Lord, I do not want to go into that place, but we went in. That place was dark and not worth living. I heard people suffering, weeping and screaming. When we got to the end of the tunnel, we sat on a rock and the Lord told me, look, I saw people suffering in hell. People spend their time crying and no one cares about others. Dear brothers and sisters, I just came to realize that hell, it's real. I wept and wept. And when I looked at the Lord, he told me, hold on to what you have seen and do not forget it. Excuse me. I was looking at hell and people were screaming, ouch, ouch. It was forever. It's, this is forever. Pain, hatred, forever and ever. I turned toward the Lord and asked him, is there anyone from my family in hell? He answered, he answered me, I will not allow you to see a member of your family. I asked him again, well, Lord, is there anyone that I know there? Yes, said the Lord, and I will allow you to see him. Suddenly, I saw a young man coming from the depths of the hell. It was Alexander. I knew this young man at a crusade my husband and I attended in the Dominican Republic. During that crusade, I heard a voice saying to me, get up, go and meet Alexander who is passing by. Tell him not to reject this message for I am giving him a last chance. This voice was the voice of the Lord, even though I did not see him. I told Alexander what the Lord told me. This is how he responded. You Christians are all fools. You deceive people by telling them that Jesus Christ is coming. I, Alexander, do not believe this to be the truth. I told him, Alexander, give him, Alexander, God gives life and takes it away when he wants. Alexander, you will soon die. He answered, I am too young to die. I still have many good years of festivities on this earth. Mm. This chance was well and truly the last Alexander. It was his last. Dear reader, what do you know about yourself? These three, three weeks later, Alexander died. Three weeks. Three weeks later, Alexander died while he was drunk. Dear reader, his destination was this place of torment where I saw him. The Bible states clearly that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21 When looking at people in hell, 
I could see Alexander attacked by two big worms. He was screaming, oh, he was tormented. He recognized me and told me I neglected my last chance. I am here today suffering. Please, when you return to earth, go to my home, go to my house and tell my family to believe in Jesus Christ and to obey his word so that they will not come to this place of torment. Then the Lord showed me thousands of people who were suffering in hell. He told me, you see, come. Some of these people knew me when they were on earth. They are, Scott, I got to read that again. There are still a lot of people on earth who walk on the street without knowing where they go. Know that the way to heaven is very narrow and it will be narrower again. There will be difficulties on earth so that you will be as pure gold, but fear not, for I am ahead of you like a mighty warrior. I asked him, are there Christians in this hell? He answered, yes. Do you know why? They believed in me but they did not walk according to my word. There are many Christians who only believe well when they are in the temple in front of their pastors. They behave well in front of them and their family, but they are greatly deceiving themselves. The eyes of my father see everything, and he understands every word with it, wherever you are. Tell my people that it's time they live a holy life before my father, before the devil, and before the world. Let the devil have no right to accuse my people. Let the world not be pointing fingers at my people. It's high time we sought holiness, and consecration. Then we went somewhere, we went somewhere where there was a lake of fire. As we were approaching the lake, I perceived a very bad smell and the Lord told me, what you see there is a lake of fire, which is already ready for the devil, the false prophets, and the Antichrist. I did not prepare this place for men, but all those who do not believe in me as their savior and those who do not live according to my word will go there. The scriptural reference to that is Revelations 20, 14. At that moment, I saw Jesus weeping and he told me again, there are too many of those who are lost than those who go to heaven. Then Jesus showed me the number of people who were dying in a minute. And he told me, look, how many are lost? My church is sleeping. Despite the fact that she has received my power, she has my word and the Holy Spirit, but she is sleeping. On earth, there are many people who preach that hell does not even exist. Go and tell them that this place is real. I was very far from that place, but I could feel the heat. We left the Hades. We went to heaven. We, we kept on going and went to the second heaven. In that second heaven, the Lord showed me the sun and the stars, and he told me, look at these stars. I call them one by one by its name. Do you see the sun? It is by my power that it shines, both on the righteous and the wicked. But there will come a day when the sun will no longer shine. Everything will be darkness. We went further and reached the heaven where God lives. There were beautiful houses. The walls of those houses were very high, of pure gold and of precious stones. There were 12 gates of pearls and 12 angels at the gate. I thought I could, I, I thought, could I go in? 
But the Lord looked at me and said, do you want to go in? Oh, yes, Lord, really, I want to. Then go in, for I myself am the door. Scriptural reference to that is John 10, verse 9. At that moment, I went in. I went in through a precious gate, and I saw a garden of magnificent flowers. Do, do you want to go in the garden? Then go in, for I have prepared this for you and my people. When I stepped in, I started to pick some of the flowers and to arrange some bunches. I was running in that garden like a little girl. The flowers I picked had many, many colors with a very nice scent. After that, the Lord called someone. It was an angel, strong and so beautiful that I could not describe. The Lord told me, do you see this one? He is the archangel Michael. He is the one who will lead my army. Look again. I saw an army on horses and the Lord told me, is not a human army, but my father's. This army is at the disposal of Christians who are really born again. Do not fear, for it is more powerful than the one which is in the world. Then he showed me another angel. This one is the messenger of Christians who obey my word. I was happy to hear that Jesus, what Jesus told me. Be attentive. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, and the God of Elijah, the one who caused fire to fall from heaven. I have not changed. I am going to show you the condition in which my people live in these last days. They've got left. The Lord told me, be very careful about the things I'm going to show you. Do you believe that I can take this church away in its present state? Then he told me, Christians that I will take with me will be glorious, triumphant, spotless, blameless. Among my people, there are lies, lack of love. My people is divided. I showed you the condition of Christians in these last days. Now I'm going to show you how the early church lived. Those brothers and sisters were filled with the glory of God. They constantly fasted and prayed. They preached my word without any fear, whereas present Christians think that I've changed. They also think that the Holy Spirit has changed. The big mistake of Christians today is the fact that they live a routine life planned by human beings. Therefore, they've forgotten that I, excuse me, they've forgotten that the messages are from the Holy Spirit who was manifest in the early church. He will perform signs, miracles, and wonders in great number causing the dead to rise. The Holy Spirit is still the same. It's you who have changed. Christians, it's high time you come back to the life of the early church. I then left the beauty garden, the beautiful garden, and went to the lovely street of gold. And the Lord told me, touch. Yes, it's pure gold. Go and tell my children that very soon, they are going to walk on these streets of gold by the hand of the one who gives life. Scriptural reference, Revelations 21, verses 10 through 15. Oh, how great it is to walk on those streets of gold. After that, I saw a splendid throne surrounded by angels, angels and seraphs. They were continually praising God, the one who was on the throne saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with his glory. Amen. Time has come to lift up holy hands unto me and praise me. At the same time, I saw the river of the water and the life flowing from the throne. 
I also saw the, the tree of life. And at the other, I saw the rainbow and the river of crystal. Then I asked the Lord who was on the throne. He answered, I asked him who was on the throne. He answered me, it is my father, the Lord of hosts. I told him, can I see the father? No, it's not yet time, the Lord answered. Even though I did not see the father, the one who was on the throne was mighty. I saw thunder and flashes of lightning coming from the throne. I heard praises. Jesus told me, do you hear these praises? These are the praises of those who are redeemed. I saw seven angels, each one of them holding a golden bowl of seven other angels, each holding a trumpet. Lord, who are these angels? The Lord answered, the seven bowls that the angels hold are filled with the wrath of God. They will soon be poured out. And when the trumpets sound, my church, those Christians who live according to my will, the will of my Father, will be caught up. They will no longer be on earth during the great tribulation. Before the archangel manifests himself, this man of sin, my church, will hear the last trumpet sound, and they will meet me in the air. Scriptural reference to that is 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. I was there, dear friend, in front of a great throne. I did not have any notion of time. A moment later, Jesus showed me how his church, the true believers, would be caught up. I saw in this vision Thousands of people disappearing. This happened worldwide, and TV and radio gave the news of the disappearances. Newspapers with, with big headlines in red also brought out the news. The Lord told me the news will no longer, excuse me, the news will soon happen. If the judgment of my father has not yet come upon the earth, it's because of the faithful Christians, those who really love me. <sighs> After that, I saw the appearance of the man of sin. He was saying to the inhabitants of the earth, I'm bringing you peace and safety. And immediately people forgot the event that had just taken place. Jesus told me, look carefully. I saw in the vision the seven angels with the seven bowls. Dear friend, what was happening was difficult to describe. Oh, I saw the angels pouring out the seven bowls of wrath of God on the earth. Trumpets started sounding. God was pouring out his judgments on the inhabitants of the earth. The whole countries disappeared. The Lord told me, Look, all those people were part of my church. Some were pastors. Behold, I did not fully understand this. I asked the Lord, how is it that your people, excuse me, how is it, sorry, how is it that your people have been left so numerous in the great tribulation? How is it that there are also pastors among them, those who preached your word? Jesus answered, well, those pastors were not preaching my word as it is written. They thought that my word was not adapted to their century. They had too much favor toward those who were given a lot of tithes before, because they were more interested in materials. Go and tell my servants that I am the one who called them and that silver and gold belong to me. I give them according to my greatness and glory. Tell them to preach my word as it is written. They are many, those who give another interpretation to my word. My word is my word, and no one can change it. It must be preached as it is written. There are many among my people who distort my word for their own profit. 
after that, we entered a lounge in that new Jerusalem. And the Lord told me, what you see is paradise. In paradise, I saw the apostles and I asked the Lord, Lord, where is Abraham? I was expecting to see an, an old man. <laughs> But suddenly I saw a young man, aged about 25, approaching, and Jesus told me, this is Abraham, the father of faith. The Lord called a very beautiful woman with an unspeakable beauty. Like all those I saw there, he told me, this is Mary. Go and tell everybody that Mary is not the queen of heaven. The king of heaven is I, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords, and the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Go and tell the blindfolded mankind that there is no purgatory, for if there was one, I would have shown you. Instead, there is hell, the lake of fire, the precious Jerusalem, and the paradise which I showed you, but tell them that there is no purgatory. Tell them that it is a lie from the devil. There is no purgatory. Then the Lord led me to a stone of crowns. These are crowns of life. The Lord asked me, what do you see? I saw my local church, the believers of the community singing and preaching. Then I asked Jesus, why are the names of the believers of my community not written in this book? And he told me, because their wrongdoing on the earth. Because of their wrongdoing on the earth. After all this, the Lord answered me to come back on earth. Now, I am going to talk about my second journey. And that I will continue on the next video. Quite moving, isn't it? Now this is Pat's two cents for about 30 seconds. There's so much more than what meets the eye. And we can't just go by what people say and people's opinions and people's slants and, and denominational doctrinalism. We have to go by God. We can't be fooled. And we will go for the lie. We'll go for the okie doke if we don't know his word and if we don't know our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. If we don't know, we will perish. God have mercy on all of us. Live holy, you guys. Stop playing games. God bless you.